Hello, and welcome to a new edition of True Audio Files. My name is Jim Carter. So, going to start off again uh, asking you to please, if you like what you're seeing here, subscribe to my channel, like the video, make some comments, you know, the usual stuff, but please uh, love seeing those comments. And I'm really uh, shooting to try to get myself up to, well, I'm almost at 700 uh, subscribers. So to those of you who are already subscribing, I thank you very much. And please spread the word. I'd love to get myself up to a thousand. Probably going to take me some more time to do that. But that's my first term goal anyways here, or semi short term goal that is. So hopefully I can get to there. Uh, real short term goal is to get to 700. And I'm only a couple of subscribers away from that. So, but again, thank you to those that have already subscribed. So, but subscribe, hit the alert bell, like the video if you like the video and please make comments as you as you can and if you will i'd really appreciate it i love to try to respond to those and also sign up or i should say follow me on facebook instagram and twitter as well and i will start posting more and more stuff on there because i'm starting to see a little bit of a build up there i want to start doing some kind of some poll questions and things like that. That's probably going to mainly be on Facebook, but I try to take pictures of the stuff I'm listening to throughout the week. This week was a little tough because work was actually incredibly busy, so I just didn't even have much time to, to listen to music. So unfortunately, or not as much as I would have liked to anyways, and uh, not anything that I thought was going to be of interest to most of you all either. So uh, anyway, follow me on those those other social media formats and uh, I would really appreciate it. I'm going to go over what I went and picked up today, uh, or Friday, I should say, uh, which some of the stuff was new release. Actually, I think all of it was uh, new release, whether it's a reissue or whatever it was. But anyways, uh, there really wasn't anything. There was one thing in jazz that I wanted to get, but it wasn't at my local store. So there was a, a Thelonious Monk. Was it Thelonious Monk? I think it was a Thelonious Monk that was a record store first that I wasn't able to pick up, but they've re released it now, and uh, I've ordered it from another website because they didn't have it at my local store. But basically, we've got uh, PJ Harvey's Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea. We've got the regular version of the album, and then the demo uh, record, the record of all demos. I really, really, really appreciate hearing the demo tracks of any of the artists where I really like their, their music. I love to hear kind of how things get evolved in the process. Uh, one that was really good for that was um, Peter Gabriel's So box set. Cause he actually had a, a CD, I think it was, of all of the, a bunch of, a bunch of tracks where it evolved, where they, he kind of played like a few seconds of the very first inclination of the track. And then he played subsequent versions of newer and newer versions of the track until the very, very end was a the finished version. You know, it might be like a total of five minutes, but it would take you through the evolution process of the track. It was really cool. But anyways, that's PJ Harbour. She's been doing that for all of her albums. She's been putting out the reissue of the actual album proper and then doing a demo album record and cd that you could purchase as well or i think it's available on high res digital also if you're interested in that and then alice cooper's newest studio album detroit stories not a gigantic alice cooper fan but i do like his stuff and i got to i listened to a little bit of it on the streaming and kind of enjoyed it i believe that mc5 might be making appearance on that i can't remember if that's true or not but i thought i read that somewhere but correct me if i'm wrong on that i apologize if i am but anyway, that's his new studio album, and it's a limited red double vinyl reissue, or not reissue, but release. So I got that. And then finally, as another part, another one of the Rhino reissues for Black History Month is The Best of Shaka Khan. And you know, it's got uh, I'm Every Woman Through the Fire and her cover of Prince song, I Feel For You. Looking really forward to listening to this one. I think it's going to be cool. But this, uh, buying this made me think of a kind of an interesting topic that uh, I wanted to kind of go over. And that is compilation albums. And kind of my thought of them on record anyways. Because 
you know, if you really think about it, and I guess it all, it's all going to really boil down to this. And, and part of the reason also that I thought about this is because I bought a, quite a few compilations recently. Like, just take a, show you a quick couple that I bought last week that I don't think I actually showed as part of my purchases, but I think this was last week because Target had a buy two, get one free promotion. So I actually got the best of Tupac, the two volumes, I should say, and they're both uh, ex Target exclusive colors. And then the best of the Bee Gees was also a part of that. I think I paid like 18 bucks for each of those. I may have brought those up last week, but also, so I got that and then I got the Shaka Khan. And it got me thinking a little bit because I can tell you that if I'm going record shopping looking for used records and I come across greatest hits or compilation albums in general from, you know, pre-digital, let's say, because that's going to kind of foreshadow what I'm going to talk about, I tend to stay away from them on record. Generally, the reason being is, you know, I... And if they're cheap, I'll I'll get them. But it's it's tough because the problem with compilation albums is you're not going to get the highest fidelity that you can because generally what they did, uh, I don't know of any situations where they didn't do this, is where they would take, let's say, the original masters from you know the records that they they did, and they would take that one or two tracks from that master and record it onto a no, a new master for the greatest hits and put them together that way. So you're basically getting a generation down from a tape generation down from the original master on a compilation album that was done uh, analog. So what that means is you're going to get a little bit less fidelity, a little bit more hiss, things on that nature. Even no matter what you do, the best you're going to be able to do is you're go is going to still result in a little bit of a loss in fidelity and a little bit of a gain and some tape hiss that you're going to hear on the recording, especially if it's pressed really well. So that's kind of why I tend to stay away from the greatest hits. The only times that I will tend to buy them, like I had mentioned earlier, is if they're inexpensive and maybe I just I don't have an interest in buying a bunch of different records by that particular artist, but that's usually pretty rare, especially if the regular albums are, are affordable. So I stress this and I stress saying in the analog domain or, you know, back in, you know, the seventies and eighties and pre-digital is because one of the advantages of digital, even if it's on a record is a lot of this stuff has been digitized already. You know, even the old stuff like the Bee Gees one there, like the Shaka Khan. Uh, and in most cases, I'm not going to say all, but in most cases, they've done a high definition or high definition, high resolution digital transfer of those original master tapes. So what they can then do is take that transfer, which does not have the loss in fidelity uh, like it would in tape. You can argue whether it's going to have a loss in fidelity in digital, but I think if it's a high resolution, it's not going to. And you're definitely not going to get the loss, uh, the gain of tape piss either, because digital's just not going to give you that extra tape piss. So you're basically going to get, or should get, and you can argue digital versus analog all day long if you want, and I'm not going to go there, but you, sh in theory, will get a higher fidelity version of the song off of that original master tape that can then be put together as a compilation without any degradation of sound quality um, by adding an extra generation of tape um, issues. So in turn, when you if you have everything digitized and you just take that spe specific song or those specific songs you want and just kind of compile them together like a playlist on your on your computer or your portable or your phone or whatever you basically can just do that and then cut it to vinyl and you know not have and skip that generation of tape that you would have to in if you're going full analog on it so you know digital compilations are a little bit more appealing in that sense so 
you know, and actually in the case of the Tupac, that's probably all digital, so it doesn't really matter and probably didn't need that on vinyl anyways, but you know, vinyl's cool, right? So anyway, my my philosophy is in most cases I avoid compilations. It's uh, So it's kind of odd that I bought so many of them over the past few weeks, but uh, I think that getting a compilation that's been done recently where it, it's you know digital masters and hopefully high resolution digital masters uh you know you're going to get in theory potentially better fidelity assuming it's mastered properly and the tapes were transferred well and all that other stuff but you'll get all that stuff should it should be better than getting an analog version of a compilation so i guess that's my take i do avoid try to avoid tend to avoid greatest hits collections uh, when you're talking about used records from 70s, 80s, 60s, whatever it might be for that reason. So what say you? Compilation albums, are you for them or against them? Does it matter whether they're analog or digital? You know, I've always stated in the past that my preference is to buy analog, all analog, if I can when it's a record. Uh, a lot of that's uh, mental. But anyways, in the case of compilations, I prefer the digital version. So, but again, let me hear your comments and hear what you have to say about it. That's everything I've got for today. You guys have a great one.